Right, good morning and uh, thank you very much for joining me again today, 28 December 2019 and we are coming to the end of the year but today the topic that I have is what were the last words that Tinashe Jonasi said to me. As you can see I'm down here at the coast and uh, I'm trying to relax but it's not really working because I'm very worried about Tinashe Jonasi. He's been missing since the 24th of December when um, I talked to him approximately three hours and then after that I got a message that Tinashe was missing, that Tinashe had been abducted at uh, gunpoint. So I can safely say I'm one of the last people to talk to him and uh, myself I stay in Johannesburg and Tinashe was in Cape Town at the time of his abduction. He had told me that he was in Cape Town about two or three days earlier and I had been trying to get him to send me a Christmas message so all the people that come on our platform they do a Christmas message so I've been trying to get him to send me a Christmas message and he would say yes I'll send you that message I'll send you that message and he never did so this was usual for Jonasi Jonasi is not the kind of guy that you tell what to do he does what he likes and he does it when he likes so I, I would always push him even to do interviews he would tell you the time he would tell you the place his security was very very tight he does not take security for granted and the people that are around Jonasi they know that if you mess with the security you can even get in danger yourself so I, I've had experiences myself where he, he like turned on me because of security he was not a guy who took security very very lightly so you can hear my tone I'm very concerned about what has happened to Tinashe Jonasi. This is not a joke. This is something that we need to take as a crisis. So the, the fact that Jonasi has not appeared since the 24th is a very, very bad thing. And uh, please, if you know what has happened to Tinashe Jonas, or if you're watching this video and you know who's got him, please WhatsApp me, tell the police there's a police case that has been reported there in, in Cape Town. And um, please, any police station, anywhere, what has happened to Tinashe Jonas? But before I go into that, let me tell you what are the last words that Tinashe Jonas said to me. He called me and I was just sitting in my house and he said, my brother, I'm just calling you to say this one thing. And I said, what is the one thing that you want to tell me? I was quite surprised because he's been avoiding calling me for the past few weeks. So I had to chase him down. He was not picking his calls. He was very concerned about his own well-being, about his financial well-being. He would, when you talk to him, you would talk about how much this is a very difficult job. He had to re-strategize. You know, his words were, I can't continue pushing, pushing, pushing. I have to go back and re-strategize. So that's what he told me before he went to Cape Town. He didn't tell me that he was going to Cape Town. When he went there, what he had been saying that past week is, most people don't know how difficult this struggle is. He would say to me things like, do you know that you need a bulletproof car because everywhere you go, something can happen to you. He would say to me, do you know that people don't even know that sometimes you have slept and you have not eaten and they are in the struggle. You say be, there's no support for this struggle. So these are the kind of things Jonas had been saying over the past last weeks. But in this particular instance, he just called me and I was actually surprised and I laughed and said, why did you decide to call me after so many times of trying to dodge me? And he said to me, you know, my brother, as I told you, this is a very difficult job to do. Most Zimbabweans don't appreciate the work that you do. But for you, so you are speaking directly to me. He said, for you, I would like to, the person that I would like to call a hero is your wife. So that's exactly the last conversation he had. And he said, one day, if possible, I would want to come to your house and I have a, a lunch or a dinner with your family. And I want to thank your wife that allows you to do this kind of work. And um, then he said to me, you know, this is a very difficult job. 
anything can happen to a person at any particular time. So this is exactly the conversation that we had, very, very short conversation. And then I, I asked him again about my, my Christmas message, because it was the 24th. And he said, no, I'm going to do the Christmas message. I said, okay, please just send me some photos then. If you can send me some photos, please send me some photos so that I can see you maybe at the beach talking there, what's happening. And he still didn't manage to send me those photos. And it turns out that was the last discussion that we have. So I'm, I'm very concerned, as I said, about Tinashe Jonas. Very nice guy, but going through very difficult times. He thinks things should change in Zimbabwe. He is not joking about this struggle. He, he was really serious about it. And he wished that he had more resources to do it. But unfortunately, he didn't have the resources to do it. He felt that people were misdirecting their support. People were not going after the genuine people. They were going after people who were doing theatrics. That is what he always used to tell me. So this is the last conversation we had. And I'm going to put my number on the screen. If you see this message, if you hear something, if you know something, please just send me a message. Also, you can call the police straight. Talk to them. I know there are many issues that are happening behind the scenes. But at the moment, let us focus on getting Tinashe Jonas back home. His family has been in touch with me. People that I know have been in touch with me. Everyone is very, very concerned about what has happened to Tinashe Jonas. So that was the last conversation I had with him. Tinashe Jonas thanking my family, thanking my wife for allowing me to do this work and saying one day he would want to come and have a lunch with us if it was possible. Those were the last words that he said to me out of the blue, out of nowhere. He just called me and said that. And I will talk to you again. Maybe let's talk tomorrow or later on today if there's any updates. The police are doing investigations, but as time is moving, it's becoming more and more concerning to us all. Right, so I'm at the beach today and I want to show you what is around me today. You can have a look. I'm in this spot. This is what I am seeing right now. I like this spot. I come here. This is my favorite spot at the beach. And this is where I'm staying. So, very nice place where I stay. I can see the sea from my room. It's fantastic here. And you can see it's me. It's really me in here. <laughs> yeah, I'm in here. It's beautiful. I love this place. And uh, I wish one day I can bring some of you guys here. And uh, we, we do quite a lot of stuff. I love it. Look, look at this. Look at this beautiful area. And uh, of course, very concerned about my brother, Tinashe Jonas. I love that guy. You know how we met with Jonas? Jonas was uh, in Zimbabwe. He went to arrest Nangagwa and uh, Chuenga. So that's crazy, man. If you see a guy who does that kind of stuff, to arrest Nangagwa and Chuenga, those are the dangerous people in Zimbabwe. He went there to arrest them and Mohadi. He went there and uh, to arrest them and uh, when he got there they caught him at the Jameson hotel and then they put him in a in a car drove around with him for a whole day beat him up tortured him poisoned him and then jonas he ran away from zimbabwe and he came to south africa for his safety and when he, he got to south africa he had never met me before he got one of my phone numbers from my videos and he said you know I knew you were a genuine uh, journalist when you started to criticize Nelson Chamisa when he made mistakes most journalists they don't criticize Nelson Chamisa even if he makes mistakes okay you guys you know I love Nelson Chamisa but there are times when I criticize him so that one of those videos when I say I criticize Nelson Chamisa strategy Jonas saw it then he called me and uh, he, he, he said, come and see me in Pretoria. You are staying at this secret place in Pretoria. And I went there. And he was not sure. So he, he would tell me, okay, I'll tell you where we are going now. And <laughs> you drive. He said, drive, drive left, drive right. And I, I'll drive. And then he would say, 
Now, turn here. Suddenly, you tell me, turn here, and I turn. And then he will say, turn there, and I'll turn. And then, one time, I saw a filling station, and I said, okay, can you buy a drink in there? And it was very cross. He was like, why, why did you do that? Why did you, <laughs> why did you make that turn? I didn't tell you to make that turn. So, yeah, that was my brother, uh, Tinashe Jonas. I hope you're fine wherever you are. No, I, I got to, you know, the connection that I had with Jonas was extremely amazing. And you know I've got connections with many people that I interview because I try to understand the person. I don't judge anybody. Anyone has the right to do whatever they like. So to me, when you come to me, I check you the way you are. And I think this is why I connect with so many people. And most people, you would think that I'm part of what they're doing because I don't judge a person and I love people like Jonas who are trying to change our country even if they don't change it the way other people think they should and I know a lot of Zimbabweans enjoyed watching Jonas get the biggest number of viewers on our channel so guys let me stop here uh, there's a whatsapp channel please forward this to as many people as you like and please enjoy and if you know where Jonas is give me a shout thank you very much